Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be comparing the play of Masahiro Matsuno and Marquez Brownlee in the quarterfinal of the World Championships in 2022. We're going to see them both do some great plays, have a couple of mistakes and see how they interact with each other when there's a call. Marquez Brownlee often draws extra attention as he's a popular tech reviewer on YouTube with over 16 million subscribers. We joined the game at 1-0 to the Americans. Now, Marquez and Matsuno are very different players on the field. You can see Matsuno here gets the disc on the line. He's considered to be one of the best offensive players that the game has seen, especially in recent decades. He's 38 now, um, but he's still pretty unstoppable. You can see him here turning this clearing cut into a scoring move to the front corner of the end zone. He's heavily involved in the Japanese offense. Marquez Brownlee, on the other hand, plays D-line for Pony, an incredibly deep team. So he gets on the field a little bit less, but when he does, you'll see he makes a big difference. Here at 2-1, he comes on and he's doing the pull to begin the point. And you can see why, because he puts up a huge backhand, which goes right into the back half of the end zone. The catcher makes it a little bit hard for himself. He should watch the How to Catch Better Than the Pros video that we released. And Buzz's offense begin. Marquez's mark goes deep straight away, but the disc hangs, gives him time to make a play on it. He has time to change his approach angle, which makes it harder for the catcher, who eventually goes up and I think it bounces off their fingers rather than Marquez actually getting a touch, but it's forced a mistake through his pressure. So Marquez has had an immediate impact on the game, but it gets nullified by Kichikawa's layout D on Pony's offense. Then when Buzz are on offense, you can see Marquez trying to guard a player in the end zone whilst Matsuno hangs out behind the disc. Again, Matsuno turns his clearing cut into an aggressive move to get the disc in his hands, milking it this time to try and get it in the end zone, catching it as it starts to go away from him and then popping it to Brownlee's mark for the goal. You can see here he's tracking it and just as it starts to lift away from him, he grabs onto it, isn't quite in the end zone, but has quick hands to get it off for the score. Then at 2-2, Matsuno really asserts himself as being one of the offensive cogs as he gets the disc every other pass, being marked by Grant Lindsley, one of the best defenders in the world, showing that a large part of the buzz offense does still rest upon his shoulders. He's able to save this disc with a flash extension layout. That point doesn't go Buzz's way, and then in the next point, Matsuno comes under on the sideline to get the disc. He bounces it off the sideline immediately back to Kichikawa, which is quite an underrated move. And that sets up the next two diagonal crossfield shots, which are classic Japan slicing through the middle to hit the open person. Matsuno gets the disc back in his hands and then disaster as he pivots a bit predictably, goes for a little inside out and Gibran Riza gets a point block on his throw. At 4-2 to Pony, we've got Marquez and Matsuno on the field at the same time. Buzz doing a bit more zonal defense. You can see Matsuno tracking Marquez almost baiting the throw a little bit, coming in when he sees the flick fake. Marquez trying to hang out in the space, find an opportunity to receive an overhead perhaps, and Matsuno switching who he's marking up. There's a timeout called, out of the timeout, Matsuno switches to cover Marquez one-to-one. -one. Marquez immediately moves away from him and has a clear run to the end zone. The disc is just a little bit short, despite his good attempt to try and tow it in, he's just one foot out of the end zone. He brings it up to the line, Matsuno's on the mark, puts in a fake, and then it looks like Matsuno gets a block. But if we look again in slow motion, the disc is still in Marquez's hand, so he calls it. Matsuno initially seems shocked, but then laughs and accepts the call. Goes for the double thumbs up. Marquez replies with a double thumbs up. Matsuno goes for the double fist bump. It's uncertain whether there's contact made here. We can't see really from the camera angle. But the smiles are around and the disc is back in Marquez's hand. Out of the stoppage, there's a pick call. You can see the defender commits to covering the pass on this side, whilst the offense runs around to get free on the other side. It's a bit of a funny rule in Ultimate, but the defender is allowed to try and cover that player one-to-one -one from any angle that they want, and if anybody gets in their way, they can stop the game. In this situation, it's Matsuno in the way. Maybe he should have pushed over to play defense on the other side, but by the rules of the game as they are at the moment, that's a pick, so it's a stoppage of play. This goes back to Marquez. He takes on the double team and then moves around the back. Matsuno decides not to respect his move behind the disc, instead he clogs the space in front, but there's a quick pass down the middle for Pony goal to go 5-2 up. You see the pressure being applied by Japan here, 
and then the final pass not being near enough Matsuno for the D. A 7-3, we see a really nice point from Buzz Arakawa to Matsuno. Matsuno then fakes the initial backhand, hits the inside channel. Arakawa is then able to hit Kichikawa and then pop it into the end zone for the goal. If we look at that again, you can really see the Japan offense hit its stride as soon as that inside throw from Matsuno goes. Kichikawa times his move, he just needs to take a step to be free. And then in the end zone, same again, it all comes down to the timing. It's a bit annoying that Kichikawa jumps on this throw. He doesn't need to leave the floor like that. So that's just a bit sloppy, a bit unfortunate that it's actually a travel. Uh, he could have made that play without traveling. Uh, so that's a bit of a shame. But I still really like that as a flow point. After half time, we have Marquez here playing one-to-one -one defense. You can see him here matching the movements of his mark. He gets a little bit sold on a deep step, just enough for his mark to be able to get the disc in his hands. And he then throws it deep, but it's a bit floaty and Jack Hatchett gets on the end of it before Arakawa. The pony then worked the disc up towards the end zone. You've got Matsuno here having to cover Jack Hatchett to stop a goal. Marquez cuts to try and get the disc, doesn't get it on the break side. Clears back into the stack. He's been struggling to get free in this point. You see him here make another move to the break side, which isn't hit. He turns that into a cut to the front corner, and he wants to just throw into the end zone, but Hatchet calls a timeout instead, and he looks a little bit annoyed about it. Out of the stoppage, Matsuno is on the mark, and he applies pressure and gets a turnover. Then he runs to the disc to pick it up and get it moving. He ends up getting every other pass in this Japanese sequence again, going up the line. Nice high grab with his favoured left hand. Another one of those inside backhands which really opens up the field. Goes for the safe return. Pops another inside backhand to Arakawa. And then gets the dish behind the disc onto the break side. Annoyingly travels, like steps forward unnecessarily. And then puts in a couple of fakes. Is able to pop the disc to Kichikawa. Who then does the no spike celebration. Which is a backlash to the spiking that was done by some of the American teams at this tournament. Next point, Matsuno goes deep for Arakawa. The disc hangs a little bit. Hatchet goes up and gets another D. Leave Matsuno on his knees. He knows it's his fault. He apologizes. He had position and could have brought that one down. Then Marquez goes deep on the pony offense. Hatchet puts the disc up. It's not a great throw. Marquez has got the read on it and he posterizes for the pony goal. You can see the key point here is that Marquez doesn't close down the space to just be jumping from standstill. He leaves a bit of a gap so that then on his last two steps, he can move forward and jump off both feet. This gets him more height. And even though the Japanese defender is really high off the ground, Marquez is higher and taller and with longer arms. But wait a second, where did Matsuno come from? You can see as Hatchet's throw goes up, Matsuno's hunting it down, and he makes the best bid that he can, but he's got no chance if Marquez has that kind of a run up to the jump. In the next point, they're both on the field again. Matsuno gets the disc, he launches a flick. Marquez gets sucked in by it, and it rises over his head for the goal. You can see from the replay angle that the disc drops quite sharply at one point in its flight, and this is what Marquez Banks on, he takes a big step towards it, reading this velocity, but then the disc picks up again, maybe because of the spin Matsuno put on it. The prevailing wind seems to be going towards the camera at this point, so it's surprising that, that disc gets lifted up. It's not a bad error from Marquez. On defense, you got to gamble on those small things when you see them, and this time it doesn't pay off. Matsuno's throw carries for the goal. A few points later, and Kichikawa hits the deck to save an up-blind pass, and then blades the disc to a Matsuno in the end zone, who turns his entire body into a basket for the catch. And what will be Buzz's last score of this game. The next point, Matsuno cuts deep again. This time, he simply gets outpaced by John Randolph, who charges the disc down and catches it, preventing the Buzz score. Pony huck it deep on the turn and pop it in for the 15-8 win in the quarter. They go through to the semi-final against Clapham. So Matsuno showed that he's still an offensive power player for Buzz Bullets, able to score and throw goals and make dangerous cuts against some of the best defenders in the world. And continuing to unleash flick bombs that evade defenders such as Marquez. 
who was able to have an impact on the game with some big plays, including this D and this post rising girl yanking it out of the air. Jack Hatchett knowing his receiver, let's say, with that throw. But it's really nice to see them having a good interaction after a call was made. If you like this video, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and if you can, give a little something to support us on Patreon and join the Hive. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again soon. Marquez, huge grab uh, for you, a highlight reel. Maybe you'll get famous on YouTube or something with a shot like that. But uh, what's it like being in a big game like this for you? Oh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I, like you said, the styles of the teams we get to play are very different from what we usually see. So, you know, getting to play it at the highest level and execute it well feels really good.